Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Unlucky Ones, uh, where we are still playing our third season called The Unlucky Journey. My name is Ryan. I play a character named Elias Blackfist, who is a monk who is slowly but surely learning the way of the open hand. Hello, I'm Peter, and I'm playing a character called Gnarled Rinsley. Um, Gnarl was a pirate up at the beginning, but now that there's no longer a pirate crew or a ship, he might just be protecting the king. <laughs> and I am Michael, your DM. This is the world of Erita, and I destroyed that ship. So come and join us on Lucky Journey. Last time we left you guys, you guys were just shoot out of the castle by a wonderful Kanku known as Quintarius. Who had a lot of notes. Who had a lot of notes. And uh, for you guys, I have prepared said notes. Oh, no, we're not going to read them. No, I know. That's fine. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a laptop being passed around. Yeah, you can pass around the laptop. You can also enjoy the laptop. So uh, he'll open the note. What's it say? So when you open the note, you'll also realize that in scroll there's a small vial. Oh. Red vial of blood. Here you go, and I'll hand you the note as he takes want, the I'm blood. <laughs> so yeah, Elias takes the blood and then <laughs> No, I gotta read it. <laughs> I know. I'm aware. Uh so you can't reference this after you give it back to me. Just <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, did you did you read any of it? No. Oh, um, it I says, saw the blood and I uh, took it over. You literally broke that guy's jaw you, 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 an hour ago. Yeah, and? You, you were fine. What are you talking about? I just got interested in the blood. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Drexel, uh, as of this morning, from the report of my scribe, my fear has been realized. My commander of my royal guard, Sarsisilus has gotten evidence to show that the world that I am not of the holy bloodline. Oh, that's not good. He's a an illegitimate bastard. So like, as you kind of look up from the note to, to communicate with um, Elias, you see that he's walked to a street vendor, and he's like, yeah, I'll get two of those. We only have one, sir. Um, I can see two of them. No. There's One's two. display. You have a display fried lizard? Yes. There, there's like okay, seven notes one. over here. You could have two. Okay, well, here. <laughs> I'll give him his money. <laughs> and I'll and, come back. Uh, well, welcome back. Um, <laughs> he seems to be on a path towards the city's Zensol and the mages collective to present his proof to reignite the war. Well, that's not good. Yeah, this lizard was undercooked. <laughs> no. All right. I okay. have your money. All right. More concerned, and he seems to be traveling in a path to look for an artifact called the Scalebane. I hope I pronounced that right. That claims to be able to kill dragons as his backup plan. As it's not on the boat during the assassination, he has left with at least two other people who I do not know and not, are not part of my guard. His first stop is Rivasaw, towards the south along the coat line in the forest. It is home to the drow. His next stop will most likely be Force Sage, home to the Forsaken. Last will most likely be Vex, the city that is next to your monastery and the Dragon Priests. I think this is for you. Hopefully you can stop him before he reaches Insul. If not, you can see I have enclosed a vial of my blood for the mages to test to prove my family line. Signed, King J. Can I get more of the sauce? We only have one. So he's not an illegitimate bastard. Huh? All right. The note explodes. <laughs> did, you, did you read the other notes? Uh, uh, no, no, no. I'll take over from here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> There's five notes. <laughs> oh, he said the meeting place is the Silver Pony. The backup meeting place is possibly potions and poisons. Uh, for aid, 
This will charge the king's personal hoard for these individuals. A good doctor. Restoral Hardor. Hodor. Why'd you get the easier one? I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't. You decide to start lo- looking down on the ground and just walk. Let's go back to dad. All right. So, yeah, you guys can head back to the apothecary that was tending to your father, Elias. I haven't seen my dad in a while. I heard. And that is what it said when you walk into the door. <laughs> so I'm going to go into the back room and I'll wake him up. Hey. Uh, yeah. Hey, 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 Elias. Hey, Narl. I. So I read a note that said that the king's guard is trying to kill him. He goes, okay, so... The king also wasn't very fond of my questions. And he might be a illegitimate bastard. Okay, he's like, that's a lot to take. And he's like, okay, can I have the notes? And then... It's all to read. No, I'm just kidding. Here you go. (laughs) Thanks. So he'll read the note. It's in reverse order, so it's like the worst. He reads like the worst one first. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) He's like, who's this guy? (laughs) Oh, that's that guy, I think. Um, so you Hodor, <laughs> you Hodor, you Hodor. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he'll read the notes and then he'll look at you, Elias, and go, "All right, so yeah, so uh, I'm sure you could you put at least two and two together, right? That we're we're five. here to protect what? Two and two together, five. Right. Mm. We'll talk about that later. I hope the f- apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> he uh, says, so yeah, we came here to stop." An assassination attempt on the king's life. And we did. And we did. And uh, it's not over. We gotta run it back. So we're gonna be going after these people, presumably. All right. And he looks at both of you and he's like, I'll probably be ready to go soon, but in the meantime, I recommend you guys, you know, get prepared uh, and like start gathering supplies, preferably a couple horses. Uh, I think uh, you st- stable Darsa. So actually, we only need one. And, I did. Uh, and then... And I don't take up much space. Say again? I can ride the same horse. Maybe. If you can, get another horse. If not, but supplies, right? Yeah, yeah. Should be a about a two-day travel. Cool. So you guys can start that. I'm going to talk to said apothecary and hopefully get some more stuff for us to leave with. I don't know. I whispered that. <laughs> oh, yep, that's what you guys can do. Cool. I'm not gonna lie, Dad. I I don't have a whole lot else to do. I travel with just pretty much what I have. Do you have the funds to help us find stuff? I expected the pirate to have his own funds. Yeah, you blew my ship. Blew up. Uh, you you know. blew it. <laughs> you blew, you blew it. <laughs> now I don't have any money. You were supposed to stop that. Your fault. <laughs> He says, sure, I will give you 50 gold. Go find some supplies for yourself. All right. I know. It's for spot. all of us, preferably. And I put the 50 gold in my pocket. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Openly. Junior and I will go look. I'm going to go with you. I will go look. Okay, so Nara will go look. I'm going to hang out with my dad. I just, he nearly died. He's good right now. Every moment is precious. <laughs> it's true. Every moment is precious. Spend it with your loved ones and also like this video. Uh, Spend it listening to our podcast. With your with family. Your family. <laughs> with your loved ones. But make sure you all open it on a different device. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the people you don't like, too. I mean. <laughs> the heart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Naro, where do you want to go? Supplies. Every time they sent me off that ship, it was always to get, like, some simple stuff. Two-day journey on foot, horse. I might need a horse. I'm going to go to a horse stable. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can hear a hand to the nearest, like, stable masters. Uh, so he Which will be in. called the, the Rusty Horseshoe. I hope that's just a name and not true. <laughs> How does the doors look? Rusty. And, and like a horseshoe. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a weird door. And I opened the horseshoe door. So it, I don't know how it opens. So it opens. It's a single door, and the horseshoe kind of like leans on its side, and it turns. It's like a hobbit it's hole. It's a vault. <laughs> yeah, it's like a vault <laughs> door. Slides open. And inside is, is a gnome uh, stable master. How do you get the door open? <laughs> the I walk under it. 
Oh, there's a Oops, I think I broke the door. <laughs> I, I think the door. So this young gnome with a wonderfully beautiful blue, like, long hat, uh, kind of like a floppy hat, uh, looks at you and goes, what can I help you with? Um, I like the hat. Not for sale. I didn't ask for it. I just complimenting the hat. It's kind of blue. Thank you. What can I help you with? Uh, well, I'm looking for a horse. Well, we got lots of them. You got a, you got a little a stallion pony? Points to a beautiful white stallion. Pony? <laughs> and its younger son, the pony. <laughs> uh, I want a miniature horse. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably get the stallion. Mm, 150. How, 150. Mm-hmm. How about 120? 150. Hmm. Just opens his bag on the floor and pouring it out. <laughs> One moment, sir. Where's my money? <laughs> I stole it the other day. I swore it was mine. Ooh, snake eyes. So is it white? Ooh. It could be any color you want it to be. It's like it's like thoroughbred. Yes. With an, a flowing mane. Yes. I'll take it. 150. 150. So he'll lead the pony over to you. I have 21 gold. Yay. And he'll say... Worth. Now, the wonderful things about these is you can name them as you wish, and uh, they will... Spackle. Re- that is its name from now on. <laughs> and then he will shoo you out of this place before anything else happens, and then he will lock the door, the horseshoe door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, word my sneak. All right, so yes, you and Spackle are outside the rusty horseshoe. Uh, all right. I only have 20 gold. Hmm. Do monks eat? Probably. I think they're like sausage rolls. So I'm going to go to the nearest place with sausage rolls. Okay, yeah. You, uh, let's say you head back to the silver pony. On my pony. silver pony. <laughs> On your spackle horse. Spackle. Hey, you travel back through the streets, back to the tavern. Luxuriously. Like, flaunting. My horse. <laughs> I don't know how you're doing that, but yes, I believe it's you. like doing the pony trot yeah. like a show. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. he's also like you're. I mean, you must be also hitting the mane like over yeah. his head, it's and you're motion. like, look at this beautiful mane it has. It's like four feet tall. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's four feet tall. It also doesn't look all that great. And it's also, sick. anyone who walks up and you say the word spackle to them, they walk <laughs> away like immediately. Don't worry about them, my bud. So yeah, you'll get to the silver pony after I a presentation. Talk of my horse. Okay. <laughs> and I'll be like, you hold the fort down. I tap his mane. He whinnies. Do it. Do it. <laughs> 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 oh, that's majestic. You walk into the silver pony. I have a, a whole new like pride in my step now. I'm walking in like barrel chesting. Yeah, I'm barrel chesting in. I'm like, I need I need some food. <laughs> and I walk up to the front. So the, uh, the bartender goes, okay, well, we serve food here. Uh, good. What do you got that can last long on a trip of two days? Packaged survival meals. That taste better. <laughs> pa- packaged non-survival meals. Plus. Is a sausage roll one of those? Uh, that comes in the plus package. How much? And how many? For every one, it costs five gold. What are these made out of? Sausage. Plus. Sausage and dehydrated uh, beans. <laughs> I'll take three. Excellent. That'll be 15, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go back with nothing. All right. Food secured. How big are they? <laughs> uh, they're, uh, they're a meal. So you oh, need okay. it for like breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Oh, sweet. One meal. How much for the rations, though? Oh, the rations. They're one gold each. Jesus. You have a competitor? No. I see. <laughs> Some monopoly here. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what's the cheapest you got? The one gold each? You drive a hard bargain. <laughs> How about two for a gold? Also sure. Known as, also known as five silver. <laughs> sure. I'll give you two for a gold. Because I like you so. Your confidence persuaded me when you walked awesome. in. So I'll give him four what caused gold. this confidence, young adventurer? 
I have a new horse. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what is this great stallion's name and can I go pet it? Sure, you can go pet him. His name, and I'm proud of this, is Spackle. Ah, yes, I'm going back into the kitchen. <laughs> Never mind. And then he leaves. Spade and Spackle. I'm gonna get another horse. All right. How's the sausage rolls smell? Uh, like they are dehydrated and will last a while. Mm. Roll them up. Put them in a bag. Perfect. And two gold left. Um, so it's only a two-day journey. So we need liquor. To the bar. Which I don't know if I'm at. You are. In the tavern. Come back. He walks back. <laughs> What's your cheapest beer, liquor? Two gold. Can you cut me a deal? I just, I, I think I hide roll. One gold. Four, five? One gold. Four. Take it or leave it. What is it? Uh, it's this thing. He pulls out like a bottle from underneath that's like half drank. And he goes, that will be one gold. Mm. What color is it? It is dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Colored? No. <laughs> I've answered your question. <laughs> oh, this must be that new hot chocolate. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> One gold. Excellent. He goes, thank you. All right. I'll also, your room is expired. So or, am I. Bye. I grab my stuff and leave. Okay. You walk out of the silver pony. Spackle! Let's go! <laughs> and you head back to where? Um. Well, how long did that all take? Oh, we'll say a couple hours to travel around. All right. Maybe I'm gonna negotiate head back. for Spackle. I'm going to go like showboat Spackle a little bit in the town and then head back to the, the pocket. Area. I probably I don't know where they're at now, but back to them. I'm sure you can find your way. Yeah. Elias, anything for you? So while he's doing all that, uh, and my dad goes back to sleep or leaves the room. Uh, I mean, he'll probably go to sleep. I'm going to dig through his shit. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? <laughs> like, uh, I'm going to open his bag. Okay. So Elias has uh, finally, after much diligent 18 years of training, or 19, however old he is, and... Then only under the most extreme, stressful circumstances, learning how to use his key, he's going to see if his dad has any literature that would be of the way of the open hand. So or yeah, whatever it is, his dad uses. So yeah, your dad actually carries lots of like manuscripts and also like practice routines for different like styles, forms, and. So I think in an attempt to like impress his dad, like he's not like obviously I don't think his dad cares if he reads them, but it's more to like try and fake being a prodigy. Ooh, he's okay. going to steal, borrow these scrolls because he's going to put them back while his dad's asleep and like practice and like make notes so that he could practice like separate of his dad. Okay. So you like, just kind of make it seem like he's a natural next time they go into a fight. I got you. So you're basically just like hand copy. The you hand copy thing. or just memorize it if it's like a simple motion formation. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. He's going to try like focusing the key into the palm of his hands because like, you know, he does it, but not on command at the moment. Right. Yep. Okay, yeah, no, yeah, I think you could do that, and your dad's going to take a while to nap, so, yeah, easy, copy it all down, you move it uh, move it back into his bag, I assume. Anything yeah, else yeah. you want from his bag? <laughs> no, I think that would be about it. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? No, I think he'll pretty much spend the time training until Narl gets back. Perfect. Narl, after much parading and two gold later that you get, uh, so someone liked your pony, uh, you, go will, buy more beer. you will return back to the apothecary. Probably... <laughs> A little bit past midday. Junior. Hello? So, yes, Narl will walk into the apothecary and I guess announce Junior. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, thought, I, was, I thought we were in like a back room. Um, I screamed it. <laughs> well, I'm not coming out to greet you. No. Uh, he'll come out and be like, Yeah. I've got this stuff. Great. Here you go. And I hand him one sausage roll and a couple, bre- whatever the, the ration is. Okay. So, yes, you get handed a dehydrated sausage roll and beans and then a (laughs) ration. (laughs) Okay. Thanks. And he'll, like, kind of awkwardly fumble it in his hand and then, like, go put it in his bag. Careful, they're brittle. (laughs) Yeah, you do that. Uh, Okay. Goblins are weird, man. (laughs) I'm just going to, like, fold it Here's your dad's share. I don't know how to talk to him. He's kind of... He'll also set that in his dad's bag. And he'll put the scroll back while he's at it. Okay. (laughs) All right. Anything else for you guys? No, I think that about does good. it with the shenanigans. All right, good. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> mid-afternoon, maybe a little late afternoon, uh, your dad will wake up, get up out of bed, and will you know, start to get ready and walk and gather you two. And he's like, all right, so is everyone here ready? Nothing, nothing else to take care of before we start heading over to Riversaw? 
No, I'm good. Nope. So we're going to... We got two options. We can try to cut straight through, go straight through the uh, the forest, um, which is just a little harder to navigate, or we can take a little bit longer and go on the coastline to try to get to Riversaw. Well, I just got a beautiful stallion, so we should go straight. Through the forest? No, straight to the beach. <laughs> Let's yeah. go a long way. I'm fine with whatever. Okay. So he says... Then we're gonna head. We're gonna head down to the coastline. So, uh, you guys will all saddle up, and then you will begin your ride southbound. Okay. <laughs> Spackle. <laughs> Later that night, as you guys start uh, pulling down to the edge of the uh, kind of the beach area, as you've been traveling for a while, uh, and your father will hop off his horse and say, "All right, we're gonna camp here." And then he'll look at you, Gnarl, and he'll say, I need you to just quickly uh, go, you know, point towards the forest line, which is not very far from the coastline. He says, need you to just scout out, make sure we're okay that way. Elias, you go with him. I'm going to start setting up everything right here, all right? So he'll Elias get to work. Elias will get his stick and walk down that way? Yep. So you guys will walk down the beach. I have dark. Uh, Narl and Elias both give me an intelligence save. I'm gonna save the trouble and say it's not twenty. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very uh, good. Nineteen. Uh, not at twenty, but twenty-one. Okay. You, as you kind of walk towards the forest, feel almost like a mini barrier that you you could pass through, but it feels like it disrupts your initial like entry. Like you walk into it, and you're like, "Oh, what is this?" And then you put your hand to it, and you can walk through it. It's kind of like. Forcing me away, kind of feeling like uh, it feels like you would have hit a wall if you uh, oh. if you uh, walked into it like full force and not passed the save. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> do you feel that? Yes, it's weird. I like it seems like a force field. <laughs> yeah, no, you. I, I said you could walk through it now. Oh, okay, with the save, you can walk through. It. Like you walked into it and felt. Can the I feel it if I move my hand towards it. Uh, you could sure. Yeah, you could feel it. Okay, should we check that out? Should we go back to your dad? What was our orders? <laughs> he said to make sure that everything was safe. Oh. I don't see why it would be unsafe. I'd prefer if it was we were in the barrier. Go in the barrier. I, I am, right? I walk, if I hadn't already, I'm in the barrier. <laughs> yeah, you are in the barrier. Okay, so, all right. Is it safe? <laughs> uh, I, well, I don't know. The I like to feel the atmosphere. <laughs> Does it feel eerie? What's the temperature? <laughs> so, <an> insight? <laughs> you recommend me a skill. Insight. Okay, sure. I'll take that. It's a minus two. A two. It feels great. Super, Actually, super not heavy, not weighing on your lungs I at all. I think it's blocking all that gross air from the city. Great. Come in here. Why? He said to explore. Oh. I don't think he did. I think he said to make sure everything's safe. And to my asturbation, this is safe. This is very peculiar. But safe. You didn't die upon contact. No, but something could come out or... I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going to go back, I guess. All right, so you try to walk back through the barrier and your body is immediately interrupted. Uh, it's not safe anymore. <laughs> By what? The By barrier. magic. <laughs> well, like, does he just freeze? Yeah, yeah. It's like, like he hits a wall. Oh. oh just no. in reverse. See, See I told you. Hmm? Is, is this still audible? Like, can you hear me? Yeah, you can tell you. Oh. Uh, See, you're perfectly safe. You no, said you preferred to I, be inside the door. I hope there's nothing in here. Uh, I feel like this has gone precisely how you wanted it to. You haven't been outside much, have you? No, it's just when someone says they want to be inside a dome, and then they're inside a dome, it's pretty much exactly what they wanted. They get what they want. They, they wanted the well, dome. Uh, so you're not going to come in? Well, no, I can't leave, and I don't want to be inside the dome. I guess I have to figure out how to get out by myself. Well, you wanted to be in there. Uh, I'm going to go up to... So, what's it look like in here? So, it, it's the I'm beginning gonna, of a forest. Go back to my dad. So, yeah, Elias will walk back to his dad. <laughs> he'll like turn and be like, bye, and walk back to his dad. Gnarl. No, no, he'll like give double thumbs up and smile like, you got what you wanted. And then he'll, like, go back <laughs> to the, he'll go back to his dad. Okay. No, so, yeah, you, you turn and walk back to your dad. So, Gnarl... It is like the beginning of a forest. So, like, it is like a little bit of sparse trees. 
uh, they're big canopy trees, so like they cover a lot of the sky. And as you like look behind you, it's a dark and like thicker forest with weeds, vines, uh, brush everywhere. So with you my... may be a perception roll while you're at it. Before... Nope. Just roll that. Before you ask questions, just roll that one. I, uh, <laughs> uh, nine. Okay. Uh, yeah, continue with your question now. I was going to ask if I could climb up a tree to get a better look. Absolutely. It might be too late now. No, no, you're good. I'm going to be the nimble thief I am and climb up the tree. Yes, do no that. issue, I think. I, yeah, no, there's no issue. Okay. You can climb it pretty, and like, Look solid. around, and what do I see? Trees? Dome? Is the dome above me? Oh, you can make me. Yeah, it's like light. It's hard to see, but yeah, you can okay. make out the dome. Like way up there. like Yes, the dome is relative. It covers most of this forest, okay. it looks like. Well. Uh, oh, I'm going to go back down, and then I'm just going to start walking to the center. All right, so, yeah. When you step down, uh, maybe a little too late, you hear the sounds of rustling in the bush. Oh, I'm going to climb back up. And before you <laughs> climb back up, you can make me an acrobatics roll. You can do that. I have this case. Is that uh, not on this case. Uh, what was I rolling again? Uh, acrobatics or uh, athletics. Acrobatics says uh, 12. Does 16 hit you? That's a death flag. No, yeah, it does. I'm at 13. You're I'm at class. 13? Like 13, 13 health? I'm at 13 in my class. Oh, I have four health. Ah, well, good. You have three damage as you feel the Not everything feeling of what me. feels like spines, uh, like stick into you very quickly. You uh. hear the sound like, uh, like shooting out of like a blowgun, like, poof, 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 and uh, you feel spines step into you. Uh, what? What's going on? So yeah, you turn around and down there stands uh someone who is currently hunched over mostly. But uh, someone wearing, like, I'm going to call it, like, black garb, right? It's, like, dark, dark garb to Elias, who has yeah. probably now shown up at his... Uh... So, yeah, as he kind of crunches through the leaves, sees his dad. He's like, hey, dad. Uh, so the, the campsite's nice and set up now. He's set up, like, a little mini tent, your bed rolls, uh, even a little campfire. And goes, hey, how did it go? And he looks up and goes, where's Gnarl? Oh, well, it went well. Um, Narl found a dome, and he wanted to go inside, and then he did. I did not want to go inside, so I did not. A dome? Kind of. In the force field. And so he'll stand up, and he goes, is Narl still there? Did I don't he, know. Did he come out of the dome? No, I mean, he wanted to go in. So <laughs> your dad will go, okay, let's, uh, let's head to him real quick. Take me back to him quickly. <laughs> oh, I don't remember where it was. All right, follow me. Is that yeah. true? <laughs> so he'll kind of like walk through the woods. Um, he doesn't want to, so he would absolutely not have paid attention, but he doesn't want to embarrass himself in front of his dad, so he's going to make a survival. Excellent. To, to see if he can notice <laughs> his own footsteps. All right. Uh, so at an eight, I'll, it's up to you. So uh, I'd say 10 is a normal pass. So, okay. no. <laughs> so he's like, um, and he's like looking at the ground. He's like, hold on, I'm going to tie my shoe. And he's going to like lean down. He doesn't wear shoes, he wears sandals. So he uh, <laughs> starts kind of like on like undoing the, the little straps and like redoing them and being like, oh, you know, that's not quite right. And he kind of gets back down. So your dad will grab your shoulder and say, listen, listen. He's like, you got to. What? Ow. He's like, you gotta pay attention to this. Your friend could be in a lot of trouble. And he looks at him and he points down no. at the ground. Help! At the ground, he says, "Is those your footprints?" Yes. And so <laughs> you guys will follow that. <laughs> okay. So I'll give you about with a delay due to uh, uh, not remembering where your footprints are. So I'll give be you... like, well, how? I mean, if how could he be in trouble though? That's what he wanted. It, sometimes people want things that aren't good for them, hmm. especially when they don't know what the thing is and they don't come back with their friend. Sometimes you can refer to that as a bad thing, he says, as he picks up the pace a little bit more. And so I'll keep with him as much as I can. Yeah, no, you can. Uh, I'll be like, yeah, but Grandmaster always says that we have to suffer consequences for our own choices. That's what gives us gravity to our decisions. <laughs> This is true, and I agree with that, but sometimes you have to help people realize that they have to survive the encounter in order to feel the gravity of their thing. 
Well, if death is a gravity that you feel. <laughs> yes, but it's rather permanent, son. That's fair. In all of the monastery teachings, we don't know how to resurrect people yet. Yeah. Grandmaster probably does. Don't talk about him bad. <laughs> I heard the sass in your voice. Back to Gnarl. <laughs> so Gnarl, uh, you just had spikes, and this man is currently uh, kind of hunched down to the ground towards you. Uh, looks like he's about to disappear into um, a brush. I'm going... It, what's the turn order like? Uh, you, then him. Okay. So I'm going to be like, oh, you piece of shit. I'm going to take out a flask of oil. He's right underneath me, right? Yeah. I'm going to drop it onto him. Yeah, that's free. You can do that. And then I'm going to attempt to throw like a light a, I have a torch box and light a torch and throw it at him. Okay. I feel like the second one is a roll. So yep. you're going to roll the hit and we'll just say that it's a, it's a 12. It's on proficiency because that's your throwing yep. non-weapons. Yeah, do that. <laughs> I was cracked. I don't know. That was a lot like a six, but go on. It was in the middle between six, and I moved the D4 and landed mm-hmm, a six. Whatever. A six and a 16. But now it is a uh, 13. Is it 13? So, yeah. So, yeah, you light it and you hurl it down. Uh, what was the flask? What was in the flask? Oil. oil. It was oil? Okay. So, yeah. So, pff, yeah, it ignites. Um, Fire does a specific amount of damage that I'm just going to call like a D10 and another D10. And I'm going to go up the tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that for fun. And hide in the, in the forage. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Good. It's a D10 for this case. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so, yeah, you're going to climb up the tree. So, yeah, you begin to climb up the tree, and you realize the fire is uh, burning the tree. Uh, as oh, well. that's what I planned. Yeah, okay. As long as you planned it, I'm cool <laughs> with that. It's in the barrier. It's good. <laughs> uh, so, would you do me a favor and roll two D10s? Maybe. Probably. Four, and uh, I'm probably dead. Four. Four and four? Okay. So, uh, you hear the screams of the person you set on fire below you uh, as the fire continues to engulf everything around it. Uh, The tree is on fire. You probably have a turn to do something before it, like, quickly burns through it. Hmm. I don't think my water skin's going to help here. Uh, Is it possible for me to jump to another tree? Yes. With an athletics. I'm going I'm to attempt Or to suffer the fall damage. An attempt to another tree. Like, all right, uh, I'm good at this, I think. Yeah, 20. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, you leap from the tree Ooh! to another tree. Uh, grabbing I'm the god it. of the trees. And the then, whole forest catches on fire. <laughs> and then you, uh, you look down and you realize that the fire is still going because it's not raining and it's a forest. That's what you uh, get for hitting me. Uh, recognizing that a forest fire is starting. Um, it's in the barrier. Mm-hmm. Elias and your dad, you hear the sounds of a scream. Uh, un, un, you know it's not gnarled, but you know someone is screaming. And then you see fire and smoke uh, in the distance. And your dad goes, oh boy. And then we'll sprint full-fledged to the edge of the barrier. Um, and then he'll... I had to make him make the same thing. Uh, and so then he'll put his hand up uh, as he like touches the barrier and it'll like... So, okay, okay. And it walked through the barrier. Uh, Elias, do you want to follow him? Or are you gonna... I don't want to go any. <laughs> well, I still don't want to go in, so I'll let him handle this. Okay, so your dad will run in uh, to try to deal with <laughs> now a fire, burning man, and Gnarl. Gnarl! Yeah. It's your turn. So the fire has spread a lot on the ground and is continuing to spread. What would you like to do? Um, so I would like to find a place that's not flammable. Is there an opening in AC? No. It's a thick forest. Well, as I described, it's not going to be for long. <laughs> that that is true. So, look at you, Canada. <laughs> um if I were to douse myself in water, can I just run to the part that was already burned and not take damage? You can definitely give me a roll with advantage. So, I would like to douse myself in water okay. and then jump over the fire it's coming towards me yeah that's fine so this spot that's not burning anymore sure give me a lot of athletics oh i hate being or wet <laughs> doing acrobatics acrobatics uh a nice um 17 yeah i say you can probably jump that fire land Whoa. in the previous burn spot of the fire mission succeeded as i look as the fire is just burning so drexel will run up behind you and grab you a by your shoulder oh, as well, and he goes, "What happened?" 
I got hit in the back. Oh, I pull out a spine or whatever the hell it is. And then, uh, like, and then my oil flask fell out with the torch and caught that force Deception fire. now. Go, liar. <laughs> Dirty liar trying to lie to this man who just wants to help you. Uh, he's helping me. It just happened to be uh, some event was left out of there, me throwing it. So, 19. All right. So, yeah, you'll... Uh, with no reason to doubt you. Yeah, with no reason to doubt you. He'll be like, okay, cool. Uh, he's like, all right. Uh, and then he will look at the fire and say, sleep it off. <laughs> we have to find a way to put some of this out or at oh. least contain it, man. I don't have magic. And I use my water flask. Drexel will, will wonderfully think for a second. <laughs> it's at a loss. Yeah, is that a loss of what to do with a burning forest? D&D, baby. D&D, baby, I set the whole forest on fire. <laughs> Fireball. By the time we die. get to the fucking city, it'll be burned down. <laughs> <laughs> the, they had precautions, right? Yeah, they had precautions, except they weren't expecting some guy to throw an oil flask. In a, in a, uh, What's the weather status like? Is it going out to rain? Uh, not today. <laughs> so I think uh, Elias is kind of looking. He's like, huh, this is going. Not good, but it's going. Yeah, you see the fire blazing a little bit more as uh, your father and Gnarl stand there. Uh, All right. So I'm going to use my limited knowledge of survival. Okay. And I'm like, okay, we need to separate maybe the leaves, the dry part of the leaves from the other part of the dry leaves. So maybe like a six feet gap in between so the fire don't spread anymore. He's like, that sounds good. Let's try that. So we'll do it around role. like a half moon kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a survival advantage, manage, Drexel says. Okay. Thank you. This is why I like to see. There's no fires. Sometimes. Uh, ten. Ten, yeah. Yeah, so you can clear out a certain area, and you'll watch as the fire like catches up to it and starts to burn just there. It won't, it won't progress. Create a nice further. trench. Yeah, able to dig out a nice trench for yourself. <clears throat> And then Drexel will walk back to the edge of the barrier uh, where Elias is waiting. He's hugging the barrier. He's like, I don't want to go in. (laughs) I'm just standing there. (laughs) So Drexel will come up and he'll put his hand to the barrier, which, again, is is a a solid. And he'll go, okay. He goes, have an idea. And he's like, do you have any idea how to get out of here, Narl? Um, So is it bad to go further in the forest? Uh, I mean, with the fire, probably not, but not right this second. Um, and does the air quality seem worse now? <laughs> yeah, you've contained a bunch of smoke in a yeah, I was wondering if the barrier so let the it. smoke out or not. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm dying. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we need to get low to the ground. Drexel says, okay, that works, but like getting out, that's the... Uh, I'm going to start digging at the edge and seeing if it goes it's to the ground. <laughs> 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 So yeah, you you, uh, you dig a hole, and yes, well, there is a little under that you can get under, like a fence. What? Oh, this is stupid. <laughs> dig around to go down. Yeah. So yeah, you can dig your way out. Do you uh, have fun in your dome? I quick thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. Was it all you wanted? And no. More? Okay. It was nothing like I thought it would be. Well, now you know. Oh, there's this little guy in a, a hood. I think he's dead. Well, then it's irrelevant. Do I still hear the screams of him burning? No, the screams have stopped. I hope that wasn't relevant. All right, well, I'm going to sleep it off, I guess. I'm glad you will. Drexel <laughs> and will sullenly walk back, uh, head kind of hung low, uh, with you two, I assume, following behind, and then you will sleep the night. Not Elias. Oh. He will uh, wait till everyone is asleep, and then he's going to practice. Um, he is going to forego sleeping to practice, so I would like to make the, con roll. the associated con roll. Uh, ten. So barely, boy, barely. Yes, sir. So yeah, so you you spend the night practicing. So he'll basically read ahead and be like, "Oh, I could run up walls. That's sick." And so he'll do like the Naruto thing, where he like spends the night trying to run up trees, but he's not good at it. You do the same thing where you mark it. Too. Yeah, yeah. I'll mark it with like one of my. No, I always sleeps like I'm such a good climber. Uh, and I'm just like, I can climb fine, but like, the, I'm not sticking to the wall. And like every, you know, because key goes pretty quick. So every like while he'll take like a thirty minute rest, right, right, just to to like run back up. He's not quite nailing it yet. Okay, so as the sun starts to rise and you continue to practice, uh, your father will get up and be like, "Oh my god, you beat me to being awake." Yeah, just you know, wanted to get a head start. Well, I'm I'm very proud of you. And he goes, 
It leans, it leans oh. in. And it, uh, what time does Nara wake up normally? I, I hear all this. I wake up. I'm like, oh, God. So at noon, probably, but I'm waking up now. Okay, so he'll, before Nara will, like, step straight out of his thing, oh, he'll lean to you and he's like, we're going to have to. Gnarl. <laughs> he's murdered Gnarl. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> we're going to have to leave him. We're going to have to watch him. Oh. He says. What? Okay. Huh? He's like, I'm going to have to need you to watch him a little bit. I was. I watched him do what he wanted. No, I mean, like, not into detriment of hurting everything around him. He looks over at the, the ball of smoke that is the dome. <laughs> I mean, we don't really know what was going on there. Sure, but I still, you shouldn't be playing with random things if we okay, can avoid it. fine. And he goes, just keep an eye on him. Yeah, he, I, I know a lot of people do what they want, but like also sometimes you have to protect people. Okay. And you hear like, oh, uh, is someone talking about me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come out here, Nara. We were talking about you. And I look over at the smoke and whatever is left. Yes. So I, you realize that you burned like a, a significant little portion of the forest. Uh, I see an opening. I look at Drexel. Well, we're going to keep going i mean we could go through there away from you good luck Norl. <laughs> and elias and drexel leave. end of Spiggle. season <laughs> yeah all right yeah we probably shouldn't go in there so you guys will pack up uh anyone have anything to say or you what is in there uh, it, drexel says i'm not real sure but if i had to take a guess it's probably some type of countermeasure to something so we should burn it again no I, i've been told to not let you do that I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> and then he's going to like two fingers at his eyes and two fingers at yours. <laughs> what happens when we don't go to the barrier together? I mean, and uh, I'll get on my horse. Dre- Drexel will say, yeah, I, I'm, I'm imagining it's a countermeasure to, uh, to something or some for someone. Cause we're going to be entering the forest eventually. So okay. odds are we are going to have to step in, but that being said, uh, yeah, try not to walk into things that are seem like traps. It felt nice, the barrier. I mean, uh, all right, I won't. I'll get on the horse. Have you ever heard of sirens? And then he'll uh, continue riding. Huh? <laughs> so, anything else? No, I mean, so Echo. Uh, Elias will be almost frustratingly close to Gnarl at all times. <laughs> Amen. You can, like, back up a little bit. You no. weren't really that close before. I'm not allowed to. You're scaring my horse, man. <laughs> Your horse is fine. Speckle's not good. Don't. It's okay. And I, like, stroke his, like, mane. And, like, it's okay. <laughs> you stroke whatever you want. I have to stay here. So you guys will Does eventually turn into the forest and head uh, back in. Uh, at following Drexel at this point. Uh, we at, go alone. <laughs> <laughs> you guys go alone. I don't Drexel go is up. banished. I don't want to go back in there again. You guys. <laughs> I'll do what he did. <laughs> After a couple hours, you will arrive into a very, very small, like uh, almost comically small, like four buildings that constitutes as a town. And Drexel, holding the map, looks four. at it and he goes, "Is this Riversaw?" And then Was Riversaw? I look for any fire damage. <laughs> it's not burned. <laughs> Lucky you. He says. I guess this is it. And he, so he, uh, he'll hop off his horse and he'll like wrap it around like a tree branch. Yeah, I'll join. And then he'll look at you two and go, okay, so go go ask around. Make sure we're in the right place. What He's am I like, asking for? We're, let's, let's start with Riversaw because this is where they said that the Royal Guards commander was coming. This is way too yeah. small <laughs> to be a place. So wait, do I, do I watch him or do I ask people? You, together you can ask people. Uh, if What's they, the priority? Are we in the right place? Is this River Saw? And did the commander, uh, the royal commander, come through here? All right. Questions. Got it. Yes. Is there any signpost anywhere? No. Huh, I'm so at a I'm loss. Can I go to a house and just? Yeah. There's only four. So take your pick. Yeah. What's uh, the fanciest looking one? Second. The fanciest one. The fanciest one looks like somebody built it out of like cardboard. Effectively. Uh, I'm gonna go to the nearest one and just knock. Yeah. So I follow. You walk. You knock on the door. Um. <laughs> The door swings open, kind of like, I'm going to say, uh, 
like slowly. It's it, it it just opens up into a small rundown room that's been overgrown with roots and shit. I told you use that building. Is there anyone in here? There's no one in there. No. no. Boring. So I'll shut the door. It falls apart. <laughs> okay, we'll go to the other one. So you'll find as you walk through like them, they they all seem to repeat something very similar. They so they're are all abandoned. Mm-hmm. They're all abandoned. Yeah, pretty much. Interesting. Well, well, Dad, I checked all four of the buildings, and since you can't be farther than earshot, yeah, I was gonna say uh, he's probably at the house like next to you. So no, is that one open? When <laughs> he's at so uh, roll Narl and Elias, roll me an investigation roll. Mm, I think they're oh. missing. <laughs> At one, baby. Uh, that is a 16, baby. 16, baby. All right. So with the 16, uh, when Elias calls out to his father, you realize in the corner there is wooden a uh, wooden hatch buried under leaves. And Elias at the Nat 1 just assumes that this isn't a town oh, at all. This, this is, is just part of the forest. That's pretty on brand for Elias <laughs> right now, let's be honest. This is a sketchy building out in a sketchier forest in a sketchy barrier. What? And I point over at the leaves. Look at there. And so, yeah, now you can see it. Oh. Yeah. Sketchy. It is. Should we call your dad? Is he here already? He's two inches from he, He's like, well, you hear him walk. He's like, God, there's so many vines. God, you're quiet. <laughs> All right. I haven't figured that one out yet. Um, I go to brush the leaves away. Wait, and I'm going to, like, put my bow staff in front of him and push him back a little bit <laughs> uh, <laughs> using an athletics. Oh, yeah. Look how, uh, Five, so maybe not. So you want to check for traps? You want to roll strength real quick? Because you said you're. I'm not opening. I'm just clearing the. Unless you wouldn't be resisted to me, just kind of not hurting you, but just kind of like. I won't resist. Okay, so yeah, you get pushed back. So I'm like, I was told not to let you do things that you want to do. Well, we're gonna have a problem with this (laughs) (laughs) immediately. All right. What do we do? You could fall through that and die or whatever, and that's apparently a bad thing. So I need to not allow you to do dumb things. I can disarm the non-trap. I like to investigate. Yes. The trap. You may investigate. Yeah, I'll also take a look at it. Yeah, go ahead. Be my guest. Two. two. Eighteen it's not plus bo- four. It's not booby-trapped. Uh, it's not booby trapped. When I tell <laughs> you, and I kick it with all the leaves falls over. Falls in and dies <laughs> instantly. <laughs> yeah, you kick it. You kick it. Hold an athletic. See if you can keep your balance because there's a big fucking hole there. It's not trapped. I didn't say a hole is a trap. I just said it's a hole. Uh, 23. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Ooh, you, you uh, kick it open and you realize it's like a fucking sinkhole with uh, several ropes and ladders leading downwards. I told you. Okay. So Drexel will say. Uh, let's we look at you two and like I'll head down first. Is this the, is this, is this the town? necessary? He's he's like I'm a little curious and he says honestly I'm if not. we're on the spot for where River Saw should be. So if I look down, what do I see? Uh, right now a little bit of blackness. In, oh, in grayish. I mean, a little bit of grayness. Sixty feet of grayish. You can see uh, what looks to be like a little faint light at the bottom, probably, and uh. also uh, what looks like to uh, like a path. Well, someone's down there. Maybe it's a torch lit. Drexel says, "Oh, you can see it in the dark." No, picks you up and throws you down. You die. <laughs> <laughs> Stop ruining stuff. Here, you can lead the way. No, uh, I effortlessly climb down. Oh, you wish. Um, and so Drexel- I will, without flexing, how good I am at it, climb down. <laughs> Drexel will, with flexing, beat you at it. He, he just, just slow draws. Falls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't he take fall damage. Probably <laughs> he falls with his arms crossed too. He's so like laying like, backwards, like <laughs> it's a superhero landing without bending down. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I did the man. <laughs> so, so yeah, you all get down to the bottom with a small little like ember lit torch and a a decently a distance a, a path in front of you. Kind of like it's hollowed out as if, uh, like, moles dug a hole. Is the amber lit torch, like, just a naturally burning torch? Or is it yeah. magical? That's natural, probably. You're not you... a very magical fellow. You no, really not yet. Maybe. <laughs> um, are you sure you want to... Like, is this even where we're supposed to be? I'm not. He holds out the map to you and goes, yes. He's like... According to this, and he points directly at where Riversaw is, and he's like, this should be a place. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I, aren't we chasing Slytherin into some other town or whatever? Maybe he slithered down here. 
Right. Well, he slithered in. That's fair. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> Whatever gets everyone's I don't mind to here. Check I guess. for traps as well, I walk through. Anyway. Yeah. Go ahead, Narl. I'll lead the way. Yeah, that's they say. Put my eyes. Elias. No. No. I mean, sir. No. And he'll like bow. Are you? Okay? Oh, sorry. Are you okay with me doing that? You going first? But he's the one who told me to not let you do things. Yeah, is he okay with he? Are you okay with letting him say that I'm okay? Lean forward. I was the one that told you to go. <laughs> yes, so we're all lead. agreed. <laughs> Just making sure. I mean, I don't want to be bad guy. I mean, I, I take a strut forward. <laughs> all right, so yeah, you, you strut forward, um, and then you die because I'm sick and tired of you. <laughs> blade <laughs> trap. <laughs> Insta kill blade trap. Yeah. So yeah, you'll walk for maybe like two or three minutes, not very long, and How then it will. And then there will be a, a nice wooden door in front of you. Something normal. A normal door. Did you know there was a horseshoe door at the town? Anyway. You can call back. That. Yeah. You can open that. I think he told you to lead. I don't want any more. I give up. Last time I opened the door, the boat exploded. I mean, that's not on me. It just happened. So I just back away a little bit. Drexel will swing the door open. <laughs> <off that way. laughs> Opening up to a wonderful experience. Damn it. <laughs> There's you, another bomb. <laughs> it's a bomb. You're all fucked. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, no, it opens up to a very open cavernous city. Oh. And so it opens up to this uh, city that is marked, I would say, best by its use of gold. Uh, buildings made of gold, some covered in dirt, mind you, but mostly uh, gold. Uh, you can hear the sound, chatter of like people. You can see roads that have been paved with small, like looks like magical lights, uh, all all through here. Is is this the normal entrance? Hey, I, I, Drexel? Drexel goes. I'm not sure. You're older than I am. I think. I, I doesn't mean I've been to every city. Okay. Interesting. Neat though. Pat you on the back, no. Continue leading the way. Uh. So what's the way? <laughs> You can head downwards. Uh, it's like a little spiral. Uh, it's a little like snake-like path going down towards the city. All right, and I, I begin walking down the spiral path. So, yeah. So you'll follow him. Uh, you'll all follow Narl down. Uh, Narl, uh, you since you can see the best and also are in front. Notice first that uh, this place is populated mostly by drow. So elven people who. Uh, Usually live underground. Usually are um, not surface dwelling for one reason or another. But there's also some other things, such as dragonborn down here. Uh, very few humans, it looks like. My uh, kind of place. I think that note said something about a drow, so I think we're in the right spot. Unlike the other place, the city is also its architecture is very much like that of like blocky structures. Uh, so very like squared. Never thought I could see this thing, like a, a place like this. I mean, we Gold? dig. Well, we dig our little houses in like dirt, and then we like build a nice little dirt shed. You know, there's like a whole place called the Underdark, right? Yeah, we didn't get to go there too much. I mean, I didn't either, but like it got separated by a mountain. It's like a pretty well-known fact. I lost my house to the war. That's okay. Did it go to the Underdark? Drexel <laughs> says in the back, confused. I was born there. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Drexel will then say to you two, he's like, all right, we're going to have to go look for the commander. I'm going to go, he points to one of the bigger buildings. He's like, I'm going to take a guess and say that's probably where like a council or a mayor or something of theirs lives. He's like, if you two would put your ground, uh, ear to the ground, so to speak, and search around, I think that would be probably best and we'll meet. And he'll look around for a second, and he'll go, you know what, let's let's meet at the entrance, kind of where the dirt and the gold start meeting. Okay. Deal? Yes, sir. Deal. Drexel will disappear. I'm he'll gonna walk. quickly run. He's so quiet. I will walk to literally the nearest guard. Yeah. So, yeah, you can walk to one of the uh, uh, guardsmen, a, a drow dressed in, like, uh, very smooth and, uh, like, winged, like, armor. Hello, sir. Mm, hello. Do you know where the captain of the guard is? He's trying to kill the king. Huh? <laughs> Not your guard, sorry. The royal guard. Feathery boys. Uh, His name is... Um... No, I'm drawing a blank here. Slippy? <laughs> Something like that? 
It looks at like your friend Narl. Mm. Uh, I pulled the note out. <laughs> so yeah. what you get? Slippy? Sarsless. Sauceless. Sauceless. Um, and he's a royal guard, and he wants to kill the king, Sarsless. I think. And I need to stop him. How old are you? <laughs> how tall are you? And how, how old are tall? you? tall? Six. One. So one? Uh, and he's about 19. Okay. Narl, how tall are you? Yeah, that's how old I am. I don't care. I'm 4'3". <laughs> how old are you? I'm 42. Okay. I... Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. And so then he'll back up and, like, bow. And he'll be like, I am a dragon priest. Well, a dragon monk. Mm-hmm. And I'm I am helping a goblin. the king not be assassinated by Sauceless. And Sauceless. so I need Starless. to go. And he was coming this way. And if he didn't pass through, then we'll just keep going because he's headed to somewhere else and I will deal with him there. I just need to know if a feathery boy and some friends who were not feathery came through. There has there was a group of people that came through, but I don't know if they match what you're talking about. Okay. Well they would they different? Uh they weren't drows, yes. Well you not everyone's a drow, but um, no, that's well. Uh, you said different. That's the well, only. That's they, my only indication of this at this point. Close to feathery? Did they have feather armor? Any of them? Feather armor. One of them did have feather armor. Yeah. See, you're on it. Um, Which way? Where did they, they go? go? So they went to stop by, and he looks up, and so you can see kind of the way that this is. It, it, think of it like a. Uh, what is it called? Like a concave where it goes down. Think of it like that. So okay. you can like a look bowl. Yeah. Kind of like a bowl, uh, completing the dome. Some would say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you can look down, he'll point down, not towards the center, but like close there. He's like, I believe he said he had business with someone down there. Do you say who? No, not to me. Cause you really didn't have much reason to talk to me for very long. Did he just you, asked me a bit in the inner ring. How like where down there? There's a oh whole yeah, city. Uh, he he points. You see, you see that tall building. You see a tall like uh, almost like a mausoleum structure. Mm -hmm. And he's like, that is where we, we like to, to call the upper like class people like to stay. Mm. Uh, mostly dragonborn actually. But he said he was going that way. Thank uh, you. Yeah, and then I'll go that way. I'll yeah. bow. Thank you. So yeah. Oh, it was nice to meet you. And then he'll bow. It was like it was. Nice to meet you. You've too. served well. And he goes, "Thank you." And then I'll be like, "All right, we have a, a destination." Did your dad head that way? And I point to like the building he went to. Yeah. So, Which is how far away from this other building? Uh, I mean, it's up. It's oh, upwards. Okay. So he went up the bowl. You guys have to go down the bowl. Hmm. Do we just go ahead without yes. him? Oh yeah. Okay. That. Didn't work once. You said to put our ear to the ground, so we well, can't get any grounder than lower exactly. floors. Exactly, <laughs> bottom floors as ground as it gets, baby. The undercom. <laughs> yeah, let's go. As we head towards that way, I'd like to see if I could find Thieves Camp. <laughs> Is anyone talking? Yeah, there's Thieves Camp, uh, like laced throughout the city. Um, any particular camp that looks like it's on the way towards where we're going that I can you know stop in? You can read any of them that you wish. Uh, I read one of them. Sure. Uh, one of them is like safe haven here. I think we're safe here. Okay. It's it's plastered on a building. Let's go talk to these guys. I'll put my hand on the wall. Does nothing happen? No, nothing happens uh, on the wall. Oh, it's it's worked in a different town over. Uh, um, okay. I knock on the wall. Why are you assaulting this building? So you knock on the wall. You hear the sound of wrapping on fucking uh on gold. <laughs> yeah, like that. Uh. I think we should go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you walk away now, I guess. So I'm going to continue towards Slowly, this and I'm looking back. Like, rich open? district. I don't think anyone's coming to you knocking on a wall. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a secret hiding spot. Okay. Let's, cool. keep, let's keep going. <laughs> cool, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys will walk further down. Uh, just... You know, just to make sure, do you want to look at more Thieves Cant, or are you good? Can't I? I'm going to read more as we're going by. Sure, so some say Safe Haven, some say um, Mark, some say... Mark. <laughs> uh, some say, like, Guild Location. I'm going to write my name in one of them, too. Gnarl Grizzly. 
and I don't think spats that, I, I, I think, I think you missed some. <laughs> I don't think it's some guy named Mark tagging buildings. I know. I think it's... <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Was here. So, yeah, you tattoo and thieves can't gnarl grizzly on a wall. <laughs> and then I guess you keep walking? Yeah, all right. I'm just going to ch- keep going towards There's the There's some guy named Mark around inner here. He's city. a dick. He says it's a safe haven, and he was here. Right. Yes, he was. <laughs> he marked it here. Safe havens here. So yeah, right. you guys will you guys will approach a large gated community almost. Um, is there a dragonborn? There's lots of dragonborns. I will go to the nearest one. Okay, <laughs> this is my. I'll be like signature move. My nearest dragonborn. I like your scale. In draconic, I will bow to him. The no, dragon. That's, that's normal. That's not in any language. Uh, but then in draconic, I'll in draconic, say good I'll afternoon, sir. <laughs> the bow in draconic. <laughs> Uh, so the uh, the dragonborn will go. Hello, what how color? are you? Like scales. It, it, this one's a red. Oh, you have very very fiery scales, sir. They are very beautiful. Thank you, and you look very youthful. Thank you, I am. We need to speak with someone in that building. I'm going to point at the building, <laughs> the <laughs> large monolith type beat. You point to the monolith building. He goes, okay. He's like, I can. It's a church, so I can definitely take you there. Perfect. And so he'll walk you guys to the church. Yeah, so I'll, I'll grab Gnarl and be like, come on, buddy. What? Why are you touching me? Well, he's going to lead us there. Oh, I didn't know what you guys were saying. So you uh, you guys opened uh, the doors to this church uh, inside. Again, following the motif of this place, very uh, interlaced with lots of gold. Uh, dirt is kind of like muddying up said gold everywhere. Uh, you see many, many different dragonborn, different colors, all kind of up and down what would be pews. At the of a church corridor. Hmm. Go on. Uh, at the front is a white dragonborn who is currently uh, talking, uh, like preaching effectively. And so you can assume that church is currently kind of in session. And the dragonborn that led you here says, oh, well, enjoy. And then he'll... Walk back out. Yeah, I guess I'll just listen because I mean we have to wait for him to finish. Yeah, so he, I mean, he's just talking about like the scripture of uh, like dragons and how they came to be, and they're interlaced with magic and how, uh, how the current how the current reigning king is dispensing magic across the land as a way to you know give back, and after a little bit of this, he'll. uh Quiet down, and the people will chat as they do in church, where they'll sit there and chat yeah. amongst themselves and stuff. I have a question to the guard or the church person. Oh, the, the priest. Name? The priest. Yeah, priest. Well, I'm gonna go talk to him now. So perfect. Yeah, Mike. Okay. So gold seems to be everywhere around here. How do you deal with inflation? The the priest goes. That's a, not a me question. That's like a anybody else question. Do Sorry, you, he has a lot of weird fetishes. Do you guys deal with gold as your currency? I think this is... I mean, yes, there's gold as currency? Question mark? Mm. I need to move here. And I look over. You good? You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, cool. Hi, sir. Hi. Um, nice to meet you. Pardon too? my friend. He has problems. Uh... We are looking for a feather-garbed or armored gentleman who is a member of the Royal Guard who spoke to someone here, probably you. Yeah, he did, actually. Perfect. What was he up to? Uh, He was actually asking for, and he says, he was asking to look at and also acquire for the king a special dagger that we have. And he looks at... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, He looks at you, and he says, you're a dragon priest, no? Yes. He says... Like, by outfit, and he goes, uh, actually, one of the knives that uh, you guys carry. Okay. Made here. And so he'll I say, but yeah, that's what he was here for, actually. And he, like, looks around, uh, and he goes, I haven't seen him left. Might still be here. Where did you send him? Down. It's down in the crypt. Oh, let's go to the basement. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Smiles and says, yeah, of course. And then he'll walk away. This is going to be easy. So I'll walk down to the basement. Yeah, so now you walk down into the basement. Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, you enter the crypt, which is filled with uh, various 
coffins and uh like skeletons of the dead uh it is dark with but kept with torchlight you can see gnarl uh elias you wish you could see um <laughs> different shades you hear gray. the sound of people talking um it sounds like a woman and a man are talking in the distance do they sound familiar uh not not a distance i mean so i'd like to just walk up yeah Okay, so yeah, you walked through the crypt following the voices uh, down to a small, almost like amphitheater uh, built uh, built in this crypt. Standing wow. there are three people. Uh, one wearing feathered garb is a dragonborn wearing feathered garb, one of, uh, unlike the other humans that you've seen. The other two are goblins who... Brother. <laughs> Narl recognizes as his parents. Mom? Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to leave us five stars on Apple Podcasts, uh, five stars on Spotify if you don't mind reviewing the show. You can follow us on Twitter at the Unlucky O1S, uh, where we tweet fun stuff. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell to stay up to date. We drop new episodes, and you should not go to the basement of a church ever under basically any circumstance. Don't go to Unless the basement. Unless you are cleaning it. Even though. Spackle <laughs> is appropriate. It was, was it? <laughs> it was so fast too. Like, can't rush these. Things. Yeah, that one locked and loaded. <laughs> you didn't miss a beat, dude. Like, onward, my stallion. <laughs> <laughs>